but essentially, uh, you know, yeah, I think it's it's good for us to set something of a foundation of like what different definitional sense of pain uh, can be essentially at this point in researching and discussion between folks who are interested in pain, there's essentially three types. The first being one that most of us are all familiar with is what's called nociceptive pain. Nociceptive pain is something that everybody who's alive and ambulatory and moving around experiences at some point in their life. Um, nociceptive pain is generally like you can see by the illustration here, something of an external input from the environment gets sensed by nociceptive terminals or nociceptive uh, endings in the sensory system. Uh, that triggers a cascade of events, which I won't go into all the definitional senses uh, of, but essentially that signaling goes up into the spinal cord where it gets processed by some uh, different synaptic terminals. And then if it's deemed worthy enough to ascend up into the rest of the central nervous system to the brain for further processing, it goes through a number of different areas of the brain in order to be categorized as possibly pain or perhaps something that we don't really need to be worried about. Um, in a general sense, that's essentially how nociceptive pain works. It's basically just something that you're feeling from the external environment, whether threatening or non-threatening, such as like something soft or uh, of not of necessary consequence versus something hot or sharp or something you need to be more concerned about. So in a sense, when somebody is having painful episodes, let's kind of take this into the consideration for movement, right? So if somebody has knee pain, uh, or if they experience knee pain with, you know, bending their knee or extending their knee, um, that local sense of irritability gets sent as nociceptive pain. Uh, and then we as clinicians or healthcare professionals or, or somebody who's trying to kind of help that individual manage that, that's going to be probably typically what we're looking at for that individual with that particular episode. And that's just one case in, in, in that case. But the other definition that we maybe need to consider a bit here is uh, neuropathic pain. So neuropathic pain now more specifically involves an impairment of the nervous system or specifically the peripheral nervous system. So things that are kind of outside of the spinal cord, essentially. And what that means is Let's say, you know, most of us have probably heard of the term sciatica, okay? Um, it's a sciatic nerve, which goes down the backside of our leg, exiting from the lumbar spine, going down through uh, essentially some of the tailbone musculature and down and into the foot and the leg. Uh, if we have an impairment that involves the nerve, essentially the easiest way to think about this is if it causes certain types of irritability, right? So uh, shooting types of pain. I usually in my clinical practice, you know, if somebody is describing like, uh, like a lightning bolt going down their leg, or if they're getting a lot of sensory changes in terms of what they can actually feel, fuzziness feeling, numbness, tingling, hot, cold, um, and we have a strong suspicion or a clinical diagnosis maybe that goes along with that, of uh, this person has a nerve injury, it, it is predominantly involving the nervous system, uh, where these folks are getting their pain generators coming from. And so that's that's a separate type of pain category because it has those cl typical clinical pictures to them where they have those descriptors uh, or impairments that are going along with that diagnosis. Now we come to the more recent definition of nociplastic pain. And you'll see in parentheticals, there is central pain. Um, in, in nociplastic pain, the, the, it sometimes gets confused because it's part of the definition of nociplastic pain, which we'll go over here in a second, um, of central sensitization. Now, our, our clinical folks maybe have heard that term before, um, and that's essentially dealing with uh, some sort of either nociceptive and or neuropathic event that has triggered this cascade of events in the individual where the pain episode now has become chronic in nature. So lasting essentially greater than three months from a definitional sense. But what nociplastic pain has happened, and, and again, some of our clinical folks maybe have had cases like this before where one has gone through the ringer of specialty clinical assessments, diagnostic imaging, et cetera, et cetera. And there's not 
a clear picture of where this pain is actually coming from, right? So that's that's one of kind of the key kind of clinical uh, bells that goes off is when you see somebody or you're interviewing somebody who has has had all these different evaluations and things happen and there's not really a definition of like, well, well why is this person feeling this? Um, the, the concept with that is the central nervous system, remember that's the, the spinal cord and the brain, gets these repetitive inputs via nociception or those peripheral nerve endings. And for whatever reason, in the processing schema in the central nervous system, the, the brain is looking for uh, more information, essentially. So, so it's, it's seeing this threat or diagnosing and, and, it's, and it's processing power a threat from the environment. And so it wants to know effectively more information is the easiest way to think of it. And so what the central nervous system does is it sensitizes the peripheral nervous system, meaning that it's trying to gain more information. And so now input that would normally um, be coming in and maybe be processed by the spinal cord or, or, or David, we seem to have uh, lost his connection there for a second. So uh, give us just a moment, see if he comes back to us here. To fire off. Oh, David, we lost you for yeah. probably about a minute there. <laughs> so. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Go, I, I know you just said the most important thing you probably said all day. Can you just go back and repeat? Um, yeah. About the last minute or so. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not sure where I left off. Sorry, I'm in Alaska. So <laughs> forgive my <laughs> no internet worries. connection. No um, worries. But uh, so uh, I'll back up here a little bit. So uh, hopefully I I got to the spinal cord element, the the uh, the brain kind of processing that information, and so when this individual who's experiencing nociplastic pain, if they're getting an information from the environment from their peripheral nervous system effectively what happens is that is amplified to a larger degree because the brain is trying to figure out well, well, what is the stimulus why is this happening we don't like this for whatever reason is, is the easiest way to think um, about how this process works and so then what happens is that the cascade of events continues uh, where external stimulus creates this painful provocating factor, but there's not a clear mechanism. It's not like there's uh, necessarily an inflammatory process that's going on or a tissue injury or, or something affecting the peripheral um, aspects of the body that there's, uh, so there's not a clear physical finding essentially. So in a nutshell, those, those are essentially the three main uh, definitional senses of, of, of what we understand different episodes of pain to be right now.